minutes ago. What are you and Bobby Kennedy trying to do? Is there anything you can do to turn that around? Well, we talk about it, and it's, it seems like it's one drop by each one of them. So that's what's happened. You just go around the room, and, and it's, uh, it's been amazing. We got so spoiled by um, Jordan and, and Quan that we never had any drops. Uh, and that's just killing us. So um, if it was one guy, we'd take him out. But everybody seems to have one. And, and, and when you're struggling, uh, the one kills you. In the past, we could drop some passes and nobody noticed it because we scored so many points. But right now, it's, a, it's, it's an issue. And uh, I think it, it probably goes back to confidence more than anything else. It's, it's hard to play here. You've got to be a confident person, tremendous amount of pressure. And when you drop one, you drop another one. If you're not careful, you drop another one. And we just got to get those guys to regain their confidence. Has to, has to, especially on, on red zone. You talk so much about the red zone, it gets to be a problem, but the, the throw we made to a tight end was perfect. There's another throw to a wide receiver that's going to be a touchdown where the, it's a great break on the ball and their defensive back misses and, and where Baylor scored in those situations, we did not. And those are things that we're missing. Dick Tomey? Yes. Uh, uh, you mean full time as a consultant here? Those were reports. Yeah, yeah no, no, no. Dick's a great friend. Dick's got uh, it's really proud for him. He had uh, Dwayne Aquino on our sideline, and he coached uh, with three coaches at, at Baylor, and he's doing WAC TV, so he's a commentator for uh, for the WAC, and he uh, he had an open weekend. And since he had four coaches in this game, and, and me, really five, that he had worked with, instead of flying all the way back to Hawaii, uh, he came in and, and um, spent the weekend with us to see the game. But no, Dick's not. Dick's retired. He's not consulting. I'm consulting. Coach, can you talk about, you talk so much about goals for teams at this point with a lot of the goals that you normally talk about not out there. Do you reset things? How do you keep the, the motivation up right now? Yes, I went over it. We're really, really honest with our team. I mean, we tell them exactly what we see. And I went over yesterday with the entire team that I was proud of their effort. It was a lot better than it was against Iowa State. We still didn't make the plays that we need to to win. So it's about winning. The effort should be without saying. And then I took up that we're not in the Big 12 South. Uh, we're not in the Big 12 championship race. We're not in the BCS race. So understand that. It's fact. Uh, what we are is, is we have a chance uh, by winning this weekend to take it another week, you can still win your eight games and get to a bowl and, and win your nine games, and that's up to you. You can either lay down and feel sorry for yourself and go back and work, and we're going to go back and work. Mac needing a win uh, this week, it seems like Kansas State's the worst place you'd want to go because of the history. Yes, I, I tried to study the history because you do, and, and it's uh, we've said it's been harder for our guys to get ready to play Big 12 North teams from the old Big 8 for whatever reason. I mean, but it, it, the history of, of my 13 years here, it's, it's just been harder every time. Uh, and you look at it, the first year we had no chance. Uh, Major's first start, they beat us 48-7. to seven. It could have been 108-7. Uh, to seven. Uh, And I don't remember how we got seven. We might have intercepted something because we didn't make a first down. Ricky got 28 yards or 38 yards. So I do remember that being a miserable day. The second time we went up there, it was a, a real tough game after a hard Oklahoma loss and Marcus Tubbs blocked a field goal on the last play of the game uh, for us to win 17 to 14 and Kansas State was ranked and had a great team so that was a great team uh, great game for us and the third time we went we moved the ball eight plays down the field we scored very easily and very quickly and then uh, Colt got knocked out Jevin came in we got beat 48 45 uh, 45 42 maybe so it was a lot to a lot um, so uh, when you, you look at it um, the first one we had no chance, the second one we won, the third one I like our chance, he's better with Colt, we nearly won without him, and Jevin went in as a freshman quarterback and did really well. So uh, probably our history has been worse against Kansas State and Austin than it has been in Manhattan when you look at it, because we've sure stunk three of the five here or something. Mac, you call on a lot of history when, when you're coaching. You, you haven't been through this year. What do you, what do you call upon in your coaching tactics to Get the well, the the hardest thing, I, um, Urban Meyer's a great friend. We're both struggling with some of the same issues this year. And and the hardest thing is that uh, fixing things is much, it's simple to the public eye, it's simple to the media because you everybody wants somebody fired. That's just the new, new thing. Um, everybody wants some, uh, they want players taken off the team immediately. Uh, they want people ripped in public. Uh, they want your coaches by name ripped in public. 
they want you to make them feel better, uh, and none of those things really help you win. Uh, in fact, they hurt you. It hurts your staff, it hurts your team. Uh, so first and foremost, I worried after Iowa State, and I was mad, obviously, came in here mad, um, because the guys did not play with the passion and confidence that we've built around here for a long time, similar to UCLA. So I, I'm, I'm not going to have that, not going to put up with that. It just, it, it's inexcusable. Uh, secondly, we got some of that straightened out last week. Um, I, I thought we had it straightened out going into Nebraska. Coming out of Nebraska, I thought it was straightened out. It obviously wasn't. So we had a lot of uh, hard meetings last week. A lot of hard things were said with coaches and players. Got, everybody got some things off their chest. Uh, there is absolutely no finger pointing. Uh, the guys are playing hard together. Uh, the frustrating thing or the numbers tell you what we have to do better. We've got to score in the red zone, and we've got to force more turnovers. I mean, that's, those are the things that have to be done. And then you'd like to make some plays in your kicking game that we haven't been making. So instead of, of uh, screaming, shouting, throwing everything, you work really hard to do those things. So we'll have most of our practice this week will be in the red zone offensively. I mean, that's just we've just got to get our confidence back and start scoring touchdowns. And, and defensively, I don't know what else we can do more than talk about the turnovers and we've done drills and strip. And, uh, so we've got to start playing with enough confidence that we can get some things to work. People forget I was 2-20 at one time. I mean, I've been here. I understand. Uh, that, uh, I understand fans being frustrated. I understand media being frustrated. Um, I feel frustrated some. You can't. You've got to get it fixed. So my frustration has to go away and it has to turn into to production. And so far we haven't played well. Uh, when you go back and look at uh, the fine line between playing for a national championship and, and you look at what we're doing this year, the obvious difference in those stats says 26 turnovers last year to 11 this year. Uh, it says 95% um, or 63% touchdowns in the red zone last year to um, – a lot less than that now. So, so those are the numbers that make a difference, and we got to continue to work and fix them. Okay, coach, we got to run. Sorry, guys, we got.